William Ruto is actually a sophisticated criminal because by th this is the entire matter that Nelson broke. You know, this PP, PP uh, directorate of private, public, whatever, was created so that you don't have any information. Remember that there, you cannot make a petition without evidence. You cannot make a petition without documents. You cannot make a petition uh, to from just the newspaper report. And why they made this issue of PPP is because the government invites a single-sourced individual kept in secret and mostly done abroad so that at the point of signing, they have not told parliament, they have not advertised, and nobody knows. So by the time they are signing, and you're aware, even if you go to court, the judge will ask you, where do you have this information? I appeared in court on the 22nd at Milimani High Court, and the case was coming up for directions. Unfortunately, our lawyers were not available because they had been dragged in to the Gashagua matter. But luckily, uh, His Excellency Kalonzo Musioka and Eugene Wamalwa were able to attend court on behalf of the petitioners uh, for the airport. And during the hearing of the case, the following three things were confirmed. One, that the Law Society case, which comes up on the 25th, continues to enjoy conservatory orders, maintaining the status quo at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and that the application that will come before the court on the 25th will be an application seeking to, um, to um, increase the bench to three, and therefore it is unlikely to affect the conservatory orders. And the judge, therefore, on that basis, asked us to come back on the 11th of, uh, of November 2024, when we will be making a fresh application to have another conservatory order or consolidate the case with the LSK one. So where there is already, a, there is already an existing conservatory order and we can also do our petition before the three bench judge. So in that way, we, we, we hit two, uh, you know, two birds with one stone. And therefore, I'm confirming to Kenyans that the status quo at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport at the moment is that everything is as though Adani had not come. And that is why I wanted to correct the last speaker. Uh, the airport is different from what has happened with the uh, Kitrako or what has happened with um, the SHAF. The, the, the health service. And I was trying to explain to earlier listeners that one of the most dangerous things the Ruta regime is doing is to introduce a very little known apparatus in government called PPE, PPP, which means that nothing, everything they are doing, they do not advertise. They invite a single source and they go and start negotiations, enter a contract. By the time the public know, it's too late to go to court. The luck we have as Kenyans about the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is many whistleblowers, including Nelson from the Netherlands and the rest, were able to blow the whistle ahead of time. And it has taken me more than two months to build a proper petition because of the amount of evidential material that you must put in a petition for it to be successful. Because if you just file a petition that cannot uh, be argue, argued up to the Supreme Court, its chances of survival are gone. What I can guarantee Kenyans is two things. Number one, the petition that we have filed is airtight. It is world class. It is a petition that Adani cannot win as we have filed it. Secondly, uh, Kenyans are unaware that a critical player in helping in this petition and even participating has been the Kenya Aviation Workers Union, who are also parties. We have joined them in the petition as, as, as an interested party, and they have appointed one of Kenya's top lawyers, Fred Ngatia, to represent them. So in this petition, the people of Kenya, the people or the workers of the airport, and uh, the petition sponsor myself are all on one corner against the Adani group and the government. And therefore, Kwahali and Mali, we are with them, including a strike option. So there are so many things which exist, but they exist because we are going through the legal aid procedure. But on the Adani Jomo Kenyatta Airport, I can confirm that we are ahead of the government strategies.
And I can confirm instead of competing with the LSK, it is better for us to consolidate uh, the matter so we can enjoy the protection of the conservatory orders they already have as we prosecute now the case on the constitutional questions, which mean there was no public participation, there was no approval of parliament, and so on and so forth. And all those things are contained. Finally, I want uh, to use this forum to thank uh, the Association of Workers of the Airport. I also want to thank Alonzo Musioka and Eugene Wamalwa for stepping in because we were in a really difficult place on the 22nd because the two key lawyers, Degwanjiru and Kibem Wigai, uh, left me alone and went to the Gashagua case, and we were really exposed. But uh, the, the court could have easily dismissed our petition for want of prosecution. But Kalonzo uh, is no longer a watermelon. That I asked him about that thing, and he told me that watermelon name came from Raila Odinga, and who is now the watermelon. The, William Ruto is actually a sophisticated criminal. Because by th this is the entire matter that Nelson broke. You know, this PP, PP uh, directorate of private public, whatever, was created so that you don't have any information. Remember that there, you cannot make a petition without evidence. You cannot make a petition without documents. You cannot make a petition uh, to from just the newspaper report. And why they made this issue of PPP is because the government invites a single-sourced individual kept in secret and mostly done abroad so that at the point of signing, they have not told parliament, they have not advertised, and nobody knows. So by the time they are signing, and you are aware, even if you go to court, the judge will ask you, where do you have this information? Now, if I can now speak about it because I couldn't speak about it before. When Nelson and everybody started this whistleblowing, some of us went undercover. And Mweru was the first person who was beginning to talk about getting the Andani background information. And so we decided to go into in a different way. The airport workers went on strike and Kenyans forget. And they said, we are not going back to work until all the documents are given to us. That was the first tranche of documents that we were able to get because the government had to give the union by law those documents so that the union could agree. That was the first crack in the matter. The other cracks of the matter I don't want to talk about because, but if we talk in a different forum, I'll tell you. But then it took about two months to build a case about JKI. I can tell you without fear of contradiction, even with the way the lawyers misbehaved, the petition is filed. And the petition I added in the public interest, I added certain other individuals so that the, the, the matter qualifies as a matter of public in, uh, of interest. That means we added, for example, Wiper Party, we added Jubilee Party, we added the, um, the DAPK Party. All these were added as petitioners so that it is not Tony Gashoka on his own, that Wiper has three million people, that this one has. So, so the court is going to be looking at the petition as a Kenyan petition. So I did not want to hog or own the petition. My idea was that we make it a public document so that even when a judge is looking at the weight of the issues being asked, and then, of course, in addition, we have the workers. So what I'm, why I'm emphasizing on the JKI deal is we need a win against Ruto. And I can assure you we are going to have a win on this matter. And if we take one win, let's say, for example, we just defeat uh, Andani in this case and certain constitutional declarations are made against him because the petition is sustainable because it has been well researched and well packaged. We can use that to blacklist him even in other cases he already may be doing or, or already being awarded. We can actually use the JKIA win to nullify or to bring back to court question other issues because by that order of the court he will be blacklisted because among the prayers and other things we are asking for in the petition will be who is this man? And we are discussing his conduct, including in Malaysia and in other countries where he's been banned. And I, Mweru has agreed to share this petition. I think the time has come. Anybody willing to have this petition, it's now a public document. Please ask Mweru for a very comprehensive document that we put together, uh, notwithstanding the fact that I need to change the lawyers. And I don't think the lawyers were disloyal to the petition. It's just that this Gashagua man and the money that is going around, I don't know what happened. I was just shocked to see them leave a petition at the hour of need. But any 
anyway, the petition before they left, particularly Kibe Muigai, who is an expert in public law, he did a very, very good job. So the petition is there and it is solid. And if we win one thing against Ruto, it will give us a stimulus and the content of orders to be able to go about the other issues and unearth and unmask Andani.